If you haven't subscribed already, ring that bell to get notified when new movies are posted. Hey, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek. If you want to follow me on Twitter for more content, you can do that at HomeKit Geek. We'll put a link down here. Today we're looking at the IKEA Symphonic Lamp. So this is the second of the uh, IKEA and Sonos collaborations that have come out. And I'm actually really, really impressed with this product. Uh, it is um, beyond what I was expecting from the sound quality. I would actually put it above the Sonos One, which is, which is pretty amazing. So in this video, we're gonna actually skip over the setup a little bit and kind of dig into some of the questions which I think you guys wanted to know. So a little bit of a different format. Let me know what you think of that in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback as we kind of change some things up, try to get you the information you're looking for faster. If there's anything I've missed, please let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we have new content coming every week and uh, hope to hear from you guys. Let's take a look. The IKEA Symphonisk Lamp is the second of the recently released IKEA collaborations with Sonos. So this is a full Sonos experience. You're not gonna be managing this with the IKEA Home Smart app, and there is no digital assistant, which is one of the main differences between the lamp and uh, the Sonos One, for instance, right? You're not gonna get the digital assistant with this. You can still manage it with the digital assistant, but the microphones are not included. This is a seven watt device. Um, it has a lamp right in it, right, which is a big deal. And it is capable of doing stereo, requiring a second model of the same model. It supports AirPlay 2, works with Apple HomeKit, Amazon's Madam A, as well as Google Assistant. So one of the things to be aware of about this lamp is that the light switch on it, which we'll get into a little bit, is a strict on and off no dimming. So I think that's actually something that IKEA missed an opportunity here. But on the other hand, even though you cannot manage the Sonos part of the lamp, you can easily just add in a IKEA Trode Free smart bulb, uh, pair that with your IKEA gateway and you're good to go. Or of course, you could also use any E12 bulb from Philips Hue or uh, what I'm personally excited for, the upcoming Life X candle. From an audio quality standpoint, I would absolutely put the IKEA Symphonics lamp at the top end of the um, medium price range. So really up there with an Apple HomePod. Uh, it, I find it to be bassier, uh, has a really nice low end, but it also has crisp highs, the middles, everything is just a really quality speaker. From a size standpoint, obviously it's a lamp as well as a speaker, so it's gonna be a little bit larger than anything else. Um, and of course the audio quality comes in with that. From a packaging, again, this is one of the differences between buying these products from Sonos versus Ikea, is Ikea has definitely brought their own design aesthetic to everything from uh, the lamp itself to the box. It's clearly an Ikea product. Ikea is the face of this product and the brand it's being sold under. Right on the front of the box, um, this lamp is available in white and black. You can tell with that little dot on it that I am getting the black color. Again, the lamp, the inside, the packaging, this is all very much um, an Ikea thing. You know, I recently heard on the IoT podcast that one of the things that Ikea has is a um, a commitment to sustainability, right? So I, I do believe that all the internals of this are packaged, are recycled cardboard, recycled paper, all that great stuff. So looking at the lamp here, you can see it is a solid piece. It's got that mesh on the outside. Um, it is definitely not, uh, it, it's, a, it's an Ikea design. It's not for everybody. I have heard various people um, say, describe this lamp as just something that they just find to be aesthetically ugly. Uh, but again, you know, that's it. You have a choice. That's kind of the point. Personally, I like them. Um, the button on the outside of it, a lot of people describe that like that large button. What is that for? For me, I'm going to put a smart bulb on this and I will never touch that button ever again. So my way of dealing with that button is simply spinning it to the back. You've got everything you need in this that, uh, beyond the light bulb. You do not get the light bulb, but you've got the Ethernet cable. So if you want to do wired or wireless, it of course supports both, uh, as well as the power cable. So getting a little closer in depth here, you can see uh, that there's kind of this um, almost a knitted covering right on the device, right? So that's the gray or the white. You've got the buttons there. So if you want to hit the turn the volume up or down. Uh, hit the play button to pause the speakers. You can do that. One thing that I found really interesting is the top of the lamp here. You've seen me trying to twist this off. This has a really, really great locking mechanism in place, which is nice. With the, the volume and the sound, the bass that comes out of this, I think if they hadn't dealt with that detail, that lampshade would have been just rattling all over the place. 
right? So, and it is not, which is really, really nice. Um, you can see, of course, here we've got the uh, E12. So this is not a standard A19 bulb. This is a E12, so the smaller candle or chandelier bulb, sometimes they're called. Right now, from a smart standpoint, you can definitely get these. Uh, there's a few different options in the IKEA line. You can also get this from Philips Hue. Um, and there is a LifeX candle bulb, which I mentioned earlier, that I'm really excited for, that will be coming out in the fall, uh, winter of 2019. So we'll definitely look forward to a review on that when the bulb is actually available. So spinning this around, you saw the wired Ethernet cable here. So this will plug into your existing network. And at this point, the we're good to go. We've plugged it in, it turns on, and now we're going to head over to the app and set it up. So we're actually going to go through the Sonos update here and, and add in this lamp at four times the normal speed because honestly, there is nothing to see here. And that is a good thing. This is the exact same Sonos experience as you will see with the Sonos One, the Sonos Beam, the IKEA Symphonics, the bookshelf. All that Sonos devices are going to be approximately the same um, setup, right? Which is a consistent experience. And that's an awesome thing. We do want to make sure with, that we name it properly in the Sonos app because this is also going to flow through into the Amazon Echo app as well as uh, Apple HomeKit and Google Home as well, right? So we want to make sure that we get that right right from the beginning. We do have the ability here to also use the True Play, which is going to make your speakers sound even better and continuously get better over time, which is pretty awesome. Um, Looking a little into here, we can room settings, which is cool as well. You can see the room settings. As I said, you can only do stereo pairing when you have the IKEA um, two lamps together. But if you just want to put speakers together in a group, you can do that as well. So we're going to cover that in another video uh, as far as that setup to see how we can kind of do multi ohm, multi what are our multi room audio options with the IKEA Symphonisk looking at the different ecosystems. So look for that soon. Um, there is a character limitation here, uh, so I'm going to just call it the IKEA Synth Lamp 1 because I have full intention on picking up another one of these in the future. So right away, AirPlay 2, without doing anything at all, you now have the ability on your Apple phone to select multiple audio sources. So I can play this to the Sonos, the IKEA Synth Lamp 1, again that name just came up, the bookshelf, uh, my game room Sonos, my game room Apple TV, my HomePods, all the above, right? Which is Pretty cool from a from a multi room audio standpoint. Being able to play to everything all at the same time is pretty awesome. Now, if we go over to the Amazon setup, there's a little bit more work that has to be done here, but not a lot. So automatically, because I have the Sonos skill already set up, Amazon is is always kind of looking at what's going on in the background and has already discovered the fact that I have a new IKEA speaker available here. So what we're going to do is go into the office and figure out which IKEA speaker I want to make my preferred speaker. So what this does is now when I create, um, I, I say to my Amazon device, hey, Amazon device, play me some music, it's actually going to select the IKEA speaker rather than play it through the Amazon Echo. So if you have some Echo Dots around and you want a much better audio source, you can kind of pair these things to two things together, which is awesome as well. The last thing we're going to look at is the HomeKit setup. Um, which is as simple as add accessory. You hit that button. Um, you're going to say don't have a code because you don't need one here. And look at that. IKEA Synth Lamp 1 is available. So this is a non-HomeKit -home um, code device. You just add it in. So in currently in iOS 12, there's not a huge amount that you can do with these speakers. Uh, you can kind of turn them on or off, pause them. That's really about it. But as we get into iOS 13, which is releasing next month, we're going to see a ton of new functionality, assuming that all of that makes it in pass through the betas, right? You're going to be able to um, use your speakers as part of automations, these kinds of things, which is pretty awesome, right? If we go in and look at the IKEA Symphonic speaker itself right now, again, we can see the manufacturer, we can see the serial number, model number, all that good stuff, all available in the app. So what do we think of the Symphonic's lamp? It is not for everybody, right? Uh, the aesthetic of the lamp, it is definitely an IKEA product and not everybody will like that. But the audio quality, I find to be really, really, really amazing. Um, I have been really impressed with it. Uh, the ability for this lamp to be able to kind of flow between ecosystems is also highly desirable. Whether you're in Apple, whether you're in Google, Amazon, or you just wanna stick to just your Sonos, all of that is okay. Which is a, something I really like about this product is the flexibility of it.
the fact that it works with all the rest of my Sonos speakers, again, this is a gateway device. I think that's what Sonos is relying on. Um, if you buy this, you're probably going to buy full Sonos speakers as well. So be aware that might hit your wallet. And with that, let me know what I missed. Let me know if you guys have questions below, comments, you like things, you don't like things. Uh, definitely want to hear from you below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like, share is always appreciated. And if you don't like it, give me the thumbs down anyways, right? All of that, honestly, is good. The feedback is always great and does help other people find these videos. See you guys next time.